All right, welcome back to another Monday night Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition West Marches style uh, Seeking Revenor campaign. We are ready to jump back in. Uh, if you missed the last episode, you can watch it on the BODs or you can go check it out on YouTube. Although I guess I need to post it on YouTube. I think I forgot to do that so far. So I'll post that uh, in the upcoming day or so so that people can go back and take a look at that. Um, so let's just pick up so we can play some Dungeons and Dragons. Where we left off was you are sitting on a mountain um, that is devoid of vegetation, sitting in the middle of what looks to be like an old crater, maybe hundreds of thousands of years old, thousands of years old, definitely pretty old. The sides of the crater wall are definitely overgrown with forest and um, vegetation, but the inside of the crater seems to be pretty barren and um, devoid of any greenery. You've kind of went across from the, um, the ravine you came out of that leads into the crater from the east side, continuing west, you kind of make your way down what looks to be like a pathway that goes down in a horseshoe kind of way. Goes back up into the middle where the middle of this mountain is. Following a trail that goes about halfway up. And then going around clockwise around this pinnacle of a, of a peak in the center. You follow that around and as you get to the back side of it you can see that there is a black pyramid built behind this mountain. You couldn't see it from the mouth of the ravine. So you've kind of went down, back up, and around clockwise, and now you have your first sight of it. Um, the group had stopped there, just to check it out. Basically, if you follow the trail, it continues around clockwise until it gets to the very western point of the mountain. It goes down into another saddle that's been made up of all the debris, looks like it's been gathered around and turned into kind of like almost like a little saddle bridge. Um, so it's just all been piled up there and it's, it's created a way to go back up towards this platform that holds this black pyramid on top of it. And think of the black pyramid as very much like a Mesoamerican kind of step pyramid. So it has, it's more of a squarish pyramid with steps and then there's three versions of that on that pyramid. So three levels that you can see made of the blackest of obsidian stone um, that kind of stands out even from where you were at. I would think most of you, um, well, I would say probably Rock and Eingar maybe feel a little uncomfortable. Uh, Alberix would feel quite a bit of unnaturalness uh, alienness, something that does not belong, kind of radiating from this valley and from this from the direction of the pyramid. And I would think that Tristan would would feel just raw evil power radiating from it. It is clear that this is not a um, natural structure. It's unclear how long it has been here. You don't know if um, it happened after the crater, before the crater, you can't really tell. Um, it seems unnatural, and it seems like there's no dirt upon it. There's no dust upon it. It gleams blackness um, from where it stands. As they were looking and kind of debating what their what their approach might have been from last week's session, and this is where, about where we'll pick up as the camera kind of zooms in to their group still on the other mountain peak. Um, a couple of you... Uh, who were watching that way would have noticed a few shadows move back and forth somewhere near the mouth of the pyramid. So there is a mouth on the east side of the pyramid that faces the peak that you're on and the the bridge that kind of leads up to a set of steps. Then it's a set of steps that go up to one level, set of steps that go up to the second level. And in the third level, there is just a big dark opening there and it seems like there might be some debris on the steps just before the opening some type of wooden barricade or structure or logs or something that have been left kind of midway on um, that side of the of the big black pyramid 
And I think that's where we'll open up. So our group is kind of hiding. You're not sure if you've been seen. Um, you're pretty far away. You're kind of ducked in behind or standing up against the wall of the the mountain itself. So it's, you, you could, you know, you have a pretty good feeling that maybe you haven't been seen quite yet, but also it looks like there's not a lot of cover to make it from where you are at now to get closer to the pyramid. And it was probably just after midday ish, I think when we kind of left the episode and you guys were debating your plan. Um, but we'll, we'll go ahead and pick up from there in case you guys had come up with anything different that you wanted to try to do. So that's where we see the camera, all four of us, um, and a war horse, I believe, um, are on a trail looking at a pyramid across the way. And that distance is probably, as a bird flies, it's maybe, I don't know, I'm going to say something like 600 or 700 feet straight. But going down and coming back up, you know, you're looking at maybe double that. Okay. It's like half a mile. Yep. I had a kind of a thought on something we could try to do. Um, what if we were to set up a, like a camp, that's a fake camp, obviously, back a little bit, so they might see some light from it at night and smoke during the day, kind of. They send out people to investigate. We ambush them, take any arraignments they have, and then try to come back like we're them. The denizens of this place have no arraignments. They wear only loincloth and carry crude weapons. The gnolls have prepared traps once you've made it into the courtyard. We were caught up and nearly killed the first time we came here. So they are naked and cunning. It's not a bad plan, but it is only half a plan. All right. So we capture some gnolls, skin them, and wear their bodies? <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm the good guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Norkers are who get sent out. All right. Hmm. And they're a little small. How did you approach last time? Right up the front door. How'd that work out? We made it through the barricade and came to them, and, and a fight ensued. And there are traps inside of there. We were caught up in nets, um, and we were nearly killed the first time. Uh, it was only by, if I remember correctly, Timor used the power of his lady to keep them at bay so that we might make our escape and we use the scroll of return so that we might uh, go home. Is that about right, Dan? Uh, yeah, yeah. You want, the first time you went in... Two uh, assaults. Uh, yeah, you cleared them out, but then you wanted to go back to town. You came back with the teleport scroll, had to fight a whole other grouping of them because it took a while before you got back. Um, cleared them out again. Uh, but then got ran out at the end of that one by some creatures that came up from underneath. Uh, and now it's been months since you've been back here. All, all told, I think we've been here three different times. The last time is when a pair of trolls came up from below and we were forced off of the... Uh, we were forced away from here. So the key is not letting anybody go get reinforcements. Yeah, I, I'd say that's right. We must be careful to not uh, run afoul of any traps that they may have laid for us. Well, and I think two things would be clear to Albrechts at this point. It's the idea that this place seems to repopulate if you're gone for several days up to a week or so it's almost like you're having to fight very similar to what you guys would have experienced at the abbey where every time you seem to come back it was it had um tried to reinforce also the second thing with this group is they changed their tactics each time you came back so the first time you came there they didn't know what you guys were the second time you came there 
they had the, the net trap set up waiting for you. This would be the third time, theoretically, you're trying to come through the front door, so you don't know what they've set up now. Well, as in the thought, I could cast Sanctuary in every one of us, and we could just, walk, just walk up there. You can only cast it on one person. Nope. It's not a concentration spell. Oh. But then that's all your spell slots. Well, that's all my first level spell slots. But I'm it can get us to smite. the front door. Uh, I got two second level. What uh, what do we have with the uh, pass without a trace from um, Eingar? Um, it would uh, give us plus ten on our um, stealth rolls, and it, we wouldn't show any uh, footprints, that sort of thing. And it kind of it kind of brought a misty black dark. Uh, shadowy mist around us, so we were kind of obscured, I believe, too. I, I like that as a approach versus all of your spells. Okay. We could also... Uh, it's very tactical of you, Rock. Get <laughs> close to one of the spots, and I could climb up the side of it in the form of a spider, and then lower down ropes for us to maybe approach from an angle that is not the front door. What about, what about that other that? entrance? Didn't we, uh, didn't Dan uh, say, or describe a different entrance that we could kind of see? Just, no, it's, just like just the, the it's like it winds around there and the entrance is on the east, but we come in to the, to the west. Now what gotcha. I, what I do wonder, Lucian, is the way that that goes, would there are there outcroppings that we might be able to skirt along the side and then, you know, make an approach like I'm describing? Uh, yeah, I think you could do that. Uh, let me do a crude drawing here, maybe. Um, so, so mountain. Uh, trail. That you guys are on. You guys are up on this trail, east. Is that way? What are we looking at? Oh, is it not drawing it on the map? I see it. Yeah. Just oh, on. I see. It's on the castle. Got it. Goes to here, and then there's like a plateau, and then. like that so the dotted line is the trail that you guys are on and then there and actually this is probably more like there's a thing that this is all just filled in with all of the rubble that they found it looks like people just grab boulders and threw them there rocks boulders anything they could find and just pile it up until there was more of a bridge between the two and then there's stairs that go up the front side of this for each level so there's a set of stairs set of stairs set of stairs. The opening would be at the top, but you don't see any other opening around it. If that makes sense from the side view. Could split the party and Barracks and rock could sneak all the way up to the top of that temple probably pretty easily and attack from behind when you guys attack from the front. Make sure nobody gets away. Yeah, it's an option. I mean, of I mean, the that... other people. Alberix is pretty confident that he can, you know, once turned into a, a spider, can really make it to wherever he needs to, especially if we waited until, you know, if, if we waited until dusk to approach, we could do that. 
this this be like your your uh, attack on the monastery? You went ahead all by yourself and cast that cast that spell. That didn't that didn't work out good. <laughs> my my timing my timing will be better this time. Uh, yeah. It's ugly. It's it's the same problem we had in the last group too. Is that we had a paladin in heavy armor making lots of noise. Yeah, I mean, I guess I could take it off and stow it, but then that's going to be a problem too. First, how long would it take him to ride up to it, Dan, on his horse? Full gallop or leading it by a, a reins yeah. or what? Full gallop. He's a paladin. You know, walking. Here. Uh, full gap. I I bet that is probably a less than a minute. Maybe maybe just right around a minute total if he just barreled out there and took off because it's it's wide enough that the horse would have no problem on purchase, and it's a war horse. So in my mind, those are the types of horses that are trained to even take steps. So I I could see him easily ride it up the steps. So. Until you got to that barricade that sits up on that third level, it'd be just a straight sprint. And that horse, I'm sure, is fast and and could do it. I mean, if we haven't been spotted and Alberics and Rock can get to the top, then maybe Eingar and... Uh, a minute is 10 rounds. But they don't know he's, if they don't know we're here. I mean, how long does it take for them to raise an alarm? Right, and I, I assume you mean, it? like, if something starts to happen, how long will it take for him to get there? You're thinking 10 rounds. All right. Would I have to uh, run along behind him or run along ahead before he gets there? Yeah, you'd be much slower. Him, or you'd have to ride with him. If you were going to run it, you'd be three to four times longer, at least. I mean, I don't, even at a run down that hill and back up them stairs... Yeah, it's easily for a person, maybe anywhere from a eight to ten minute run, five, you know, five to ten minute run. I have it on good authority that dwarves are excellent sprinters, not good over long distance. <laughs> what world you is know, that? He could cast pass without trace, and we could all get into position, and then the oh. paladin could come barreling down there. Uh, once we give him the signal with the, with the little mirror catching the signal mirror. And then when they come out to meet him, we can bushwhack him. I'd be up for trying that. Sure. I mean, if he's taking the dodge action on his horse, you know, and just trying to get in, that that might be helpful. And then we just don't give our position away until he's up on them. All right, so what if they send somebody for help the moment they see him? Are we going to get inside the temple? I don't know, man. We might have to get this party started if they send somebody for help. But with you having advantage on stealth, with a plus 10 pretty sure you can be just about anywhere you need to be yeah i can i i think rock thinks he can sneak up but doesn't know about the rest of it is all i'll be feels pretty confident once he you know by turning into something that's stealthy or by him casting that spell I'm, okay. a stealth, I'm stealthy for a dwarf. That just leaves you. Plate wearing pal. I'm fine riding up. I mean, if you guys want to sneak, I can do the frontal charge. That's fine. Now, do bear in mind that this is more than just getting to the thing. There's going to be a lot in there. So we can't blow all of our resources just trying to get in. I, I mean, the other option is we just cast it cast the past thought trace on the group and we just walk up right and hope the rolls are good but then yeah. we haven't split the party well you can still do this i mean just cast without trace on everybody and then because we did last time right and then i can just see how far i get on my horse before they notice me when you guys are ready, you guys are ready. 
Well, you still get a plus 10 to your to your stealth roll too. So even with disadvantage, it's not awful. Mm-hmm. Right. And are we going to is this is a question for the DM. Is this going to be a group stealth check or individual group st- uh, stealth check? Uh, if you're moving as a group, it's a group. If you're somehow splitting up or doing something different, then it'll have to be more individual. Well, let's do it that way. I mean, we'll have pretty good stealth okay. rolls okay. on average. Do it as a group. Then we've got good rolls on average, right? Well, so even if he tanks, tanks, better than the average. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I would I would prefer for us to all stay together because I could see that going poorly. I love the visual of the charge, but you guys make your own plan. <laughs> <laughs> I think the charge is awesome, quite honestly. All right, flip a coin. I'm totally fine just doing it. <laughs> let's let's take an Osalian at once. Uh, a charge? Sure. sure. <laughs> Let's do the charge. Fuck it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, Dude, he's going to get smoked. That means we all three have to make our rolls going up. Well, do we want to go up as a group in stealth? The three of us? Yeah, I think so. Then we can nail that roll if you cast a spell and then we all... We all make our stealth checks at that point. Okay. All right. You ready for me to cast? I was hoping a dwarf would roll a, a ride a wolf druid charging next to the paladin on his war horse and then a sprinting raging barbarian. I think that'd be the, the movie play. The movie. <laughs> so wait, let me see if I get this right. I have the rules roll for, for stealth. What I'm going to ask you guys ask is what your bonuses what your bon- are. If if we were to do that, see that red smear right there? That's what we would be. <laughs> All right. So we're doing three up, one charge. Yeah. I believe so. And your your pass without a trace is a radius on you. No, it's on. I can put it on any uh, person that I want to. But it's a group spell, right? Yeah, it's like a he thirty chooses, foot radius. and then they have to stay within a certain range of him. Okay, so it's it's at a point on Each you. Each creature I choose within thirty feet of me, including me, has a plus ten. Plus 10 bonus to dexterity stealth check. Is that on cast or is it continuous? Um, duration, concentration up to one hour. Um, it, I think it reads that you'd have to be within 30 feet of me. Right, yeah. uh, let me put it up there again. If you scroll up in the in the sidebar, you'll, you'll see it. Yeah, it radiates from you. So you would have to stay within 30 feet of me uh, for the duration of the concentration. All right, so three people are moving off. Yeah, I'm going to turn into a giant wolf spider. That gives me a plus seven to my <clears throat> uh, stealth. Okay. It's going to pull his hood up <laughs> for the plus 10, just like uh, the Dungeons and Dragons cartoon. All right. For, so for a 15. 15 total? Not counting the 10, right? Don't count. No, I'm a 5 plus the 10 for the cloak. Gotcha. With advantage. With advantage. 
That's good because I rolled a 20 that. for you. Plus a 10 with the cloak. So I, I have a plus one for stealth dex, not including the plus 10. Okay. Okay. So I have all of your numbers um, and you stealth off. I would say that you guys are having a hard time seeing um, Rock. Like he is nothing but mist on the wind in front of you that you, for some reason, can't really see. His role is so good. So the other two of you, it's pretty good. You know the spell is the thing keeping you um, quiet. And the thing that's keeping you slightly distorted. Um, and I guess you guys move off. Tristan, you would definitely not see them within just... Well, go ahead and make a perception check. How about that? Roll perception. Yeah, you lose sight of them. Like they're, they're about 10 feet out. You can hear the, the crunching of the feet. That You know they're moving. They whisper one last thing, and then all of a sudden, you just don't even see them at all. You have no idea. Um, yep. So you guys are about midway along the, uh, the scree pile, and you do recognize that... Um, as you move, some of the rocks on the scree pile kind of shift and settle. And you're pretty sure that had you not had magical help, um, this might have been something that would have given you away. But it seems like the rocks aren't going very far. They're not making very much noise. There's a breeze that's taking the noise away. And there's like a a grayness to you all that seems to help blend in. But you do every now and then see a little bit of a glint back up on the hill, and you can see some, some of the sun shining off of um, obviously some metallic armor up on, that, up on the mountain. And you make your way across and you get to the first set of stairs um, of the pyramid. Dun, 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 dun. What would you like to do? I am going to skitter right. lightly. So we made it to that point. Yeah. rock. On the... Yep, so there's, imagine a flat plateau that you've just come up to that's of natural mountain range. And the levelness of this plateau is unnatural as if maybe by magical means or some greater power had cut the top of the mountain completely off, um, completely level, perfectly, perfectly flat, sliced stone. Then with just a few feet inwards, the black pyramid starts. You can see it as if it's pushed up out of the ground. It's clear that it must go deeper into this mountain. But the mountain is definitely bigger than the pyramid that sits on it. So there's room around the side where the first square portion of the step pyramid starts. So think of like Aztec or Mayan pyramids, not um, Egyptian pyramids. Is the pyramid side smooth enough to climb or too smooth to climb or do we have to keep going up? It looks pretty smooth. It looks like it might be difficult to climb, but not impossible. The stairs would definitely be easier, um, but you, there's no cracks. There is no erosion. There is no damage at all to any of the black sides of this pyramid. It looks as if it's brand new. There's not even dust on it. Like if you wipe your hand across it, not even dust sticks to it. Does Ankar, if he looks at this stone, does he, using his stone cunning, does he... Uh, realize anything about it, uh, origin, that sort of thing? I would say you are a little bit taken aback because it's you recognize it as a material you've never seen before. It probably has the properties of stone, but you're not even sure if it's stone. Hmm. 
take the, <clears throat> take the steps. Yeah. Rock, rock over up the stairs. I'm going to stay Bobble. within the 30 feet, but I'm going to kind of angle myself along the wall and climb to stay hid. Okay. You go up to the first set. You've made it to the first kind of plateau. And again, it's another area. So it's, it's flat black stone. Um, it's almost like a little lip, almost like a um, kind of a flat surface before it goes to the next step of the pyramid. And then there's another new set of stairs that go up the second level. So you guys are now at the second level steps. No sign of anybody at this point. I'd like to kind of stop and use my spidey sense. Sure, you can go ahead and make a perception check. You hear nothing more than the wind that kind of cascades through um, the plains or the, the valley there. And you kind of pick up um, Eingar and you still are having a very hard time seeing Rock. You're not, you, you almost question yourself and think maybe Rock didn't make it with you. Like maybe he got lost on the way or you're just, you don't see where he went. You can see Eingar um, and then that's about it. You haven't heard anything. You don't see anything currently from where you're at. Let's keep moving quickly. Elves are good for something. Yes. All right. So you move up to the third step set of stairs. Uh, one, two. So at the very, well, you're on the second set of stairs. The, you can see the third final plateau or the th third final piece of the step pyramid. And just as you get up to where your eyes can look over the lip, you can see that there's another set of half stairs that lead to an, an opening. It's big, square, and dark um, inside. The sun barely streams in. And there you can see what looks to be about halfway up them stairs, a wooden barricade that's been created. Looks like you definitely have to try to climb over it um, if you're going to continue up the stairs. It's um, over probably eight or nine feet built tall and definitely makes, I mean, gives you the impression of, you know, somebody dragged a bunch of logs and wood up here and set it on the stone, on the, on the stairs on purpose. Is there a way around it? Um, still no movement or anything of that nature? Um, none currently. Uh, oh, well, when your eyes breach, let's, uh, let me make a roll for them. Uh, where are they at? Uh, okay. You see, as your eyes kind of peek up over, you think you see between some of the logs that are stacked the slightest of movement on the other side of the stack of logs. But it's brief and faint, and you get no real detail from it, but there's something there. To answer Eingar's question, so you're looking up at the stairs, looking up kind of next to Alberix. To your side is just sheer, probably, I don't know, maybe like a 30 degree flat side of a pyramid. If you go to the very top of the steps, you could move around. There's there's enough of a lip to move around the, the, the final part, the final top piece. Um, but you'd have to get up to the to the end of the stairs and then you could try to look around that very top piece. So think of it, I'll draw another, let me give you one more drawing here. I'll do a different color so you can see a little better. Uh, be black, freehand, and let's let the group see here. 
I wish we had taken a long rest before we did this. So think of it like that. And uh, that's where the barricade is? Correct. Correct. I don't have any way to speak. So I can't communicate. Um, I guess... Rock will start going up and over the barricade as stealthily as he can. Okay. Um, so the group that is Albrix and Eingar, you can't even see Rock. So what are you two doing? Uh, I'm going to stay put. Do I see the spider? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to stay within 30 feet of Albiorix. So okay. If he's going up and over. I am going to try and go up, up and over and kind of peek over also. So you're staying right on the wall or the stairs, Albiorix? Um, so I don't see Rot go over the thing, do I? You don't see him move forward. He is super stealthed. If he is, he is, if he is uh, stealthy by my um, spell, would I know where he is? Because I would, I would know. I think normally, but he got a natural twenty plus all of the bonuses. So to okay. me, he's he's practically invisible at the moment. Okay. Normally, you would be right. Normally, you would know each you each other where you were. You'd hear little breathing, you would hear the slightest of steps. Um, your vision would be obscured, but you might still be able to realize there was somebody there. Although if it's a group of people, in my mind, you may not recognize, like say you have five people with you, you may not know who's in what spot, but you know that there's five blobs around you, give or take, um, okay. is the way I kind of imagine that happening. But he rolled so well, I'm just saying that you guys are not even see him. I mean, it's like, it's like he's a ghost. Thirty-five. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. like an it's like an hour. Um, I'm gonna sit there and listen, try to listen to hear if I can hear anything. After uh, thirty seconds or so, and then I'm gonna start to to get a better view of what's going on. Okay. So, Brock, you go ahead and give me an athletics check to climb up the barricade. It is obviously meant not to be easily climbed, but it's not impossible. Okay. So you kind of are moving up and you're, you're maintaining your stealth. You're, you're going slow enough that um, you're kind of sneaking up on them. And as you're climbing up, um, you hear the the shuffling of feet a little bit and maybe the scrape of wood on stone for a second and then you kind of pause and then and then you don't hear anything else and then so another second or two goes by and you get to the top and as you get to the top you're looking over the barricade you can see two um, ruddy gray creatures that are about four feet tall or so hat they have like um clubs that are just kind of dangling in these long arms on the ground and they they sometimes they look at the barricade and then they look at each other and they shift and then they look back at the barricade um and there's two of them just kind of standing here can i get down and pass them maybe 
You can try. I will try. Okay. Do you want another athletics or stealth? Uh, nope. Nope. So you kind of move down the, the edge and it just seems like it's serendipity that one is looking just one way and one's kind of looking back up in the pyramid. So you kind of take that moment um, to slip by kind of one of them and one paces over to the other one for a second. They trade something in their hands and that gives you a chance to kind of move a little bit further in and the other one takes its position back and it's kind of they're both back to looking at um, the barricade again a little bit. And you kind of start to move a little bit further into the um, pyramid and what is Alberix and Eingar doing? I am going to try to move up to uh, get a, a little better look. But before I do, I'm going to pause and with the, the, one of my spidery legs, I'm going to touch Eingar on his pouch that has the signal mirror in it, like as to remind him that we are going to have to signal the paladin. But I am going to try to move up uh, and get a look-see for myself now, too. All right. And let's do a... Uh, yeah, that's probably fine. All right. Remind me what your bonuses were for your stealth. 17 base. 17 and then plus 10 because you're still within 30 feet? 30 feet. Uh, no, it's plus 7 plus 10 so okay so you very quietly um eight of your legs make it very easy for you to climb up without making a single noise a misstep um as you easily navigate up this barricade of logs and as you kind of inch your way up to the top you're kind of looking over and though you see these creatures which you recognize as two norkers um, standing there they don't see you um your your the the color of the the hair and just the natural just um, camouflage capabilities of a spider blending into these logs you're kind of at the top your eyes are looking over and they're even though they're looking at the barricade you can tell there's no recognition in their eyes that they've seen you but they are standing right in the center of the hallway there and as you're looking at it you're not you're sure that you could maybe launch yourself an attack but you're not just gonna be able to walk by them like you can tell there's there's not enough room for here for you to go by without them noticing a big giant wolf spider. Could I back down and then climb up over the walls of the the dog on it? You can move along all the walls. Um, the ceiling is just a little ways up also, but again, they're sitting back in basically like a 10 foot opening and it's 10 foot of black stone even if you're hanging from the ceiling or if you're coming in from a side wall, you're pretty sure they're going to see you. Okay. Without something else. Um, right. um, At this point, I'm going to try and move up the, uh, move up the barricade towards the top. All right. You will need an athletics check. All right. So, yeah. So now we see a dwarf kind of move up and um, remind me of your modifiers. Uh, plus one. Plus, plus one and plus 10 is 11. Okay. So you move your way up and I think there's like a soft noise in Albrex. You kind of look quickly as you see um, Eingar coming up. And then you shift your vision back over to the Norkers and it doesn't look like they've reacted to the noise. And then 
you've uh, Eingar has climbed his way up high enough that your eyes can look over the top of the barricade and you too see now what appear to be as described to you by Alberix two Norker creatures which are these gray skinned um, long armed holding clubs and they have like loincloths on and um, a big kind of protruding face um, kind of the um, crow magnon like um, foreheads on them very kind of primitive looking creature two of them um, standing in the um, the this hallway that leads into the darkness of this pyramid I want to duck just down enough so they can't see me I'm gonna I want to quietly pull out my mirror and flash it to uh, Tristan to give him the signal to to take off all right, so we have you kind of digging into your pouch. Um, rock, what are you doing? So the way the sun is shining in to this pyramid, it's darkness and it's messing with what you can see, but you've moved a little bit further in from where they are. I'm going to go over to my map so I describe it correctly to you. There we go. All right. Um, you get into the portion and your eyes begin to adjust. And what you see in front of you is a completely dark interior pyramid, black stone, black columns. Um, interspersed, you see what look to be like crates and barrels um, scattered about in this large room. You can see, let's see, your vision's about 60 feet, right? Yeah. Just at the end of your vision, you think you see a set of stairs that lead down at the back of this open, expansive room. And you can definitely hear several, probably up to a, a dozen or so either breathing or moving or shifting creatures somewhere near you, though the walls kind of block what you can see. And then further in, you can actually see the forms of other creatures. Um, you would recognize them as gnolls that seem to be gathered in a group. And um, there's like two little packs of them and they look like they are either talking amongst themselves um, a couple of them are probably eating. Um, some of them are, you know, doing other things, but they're all kind of just in the back of the pyramid, this big open room. And the room that you're in is probably 80 to 90 feet long total. I'll make sure that I'm not silhouetted against the uh, entrance and I'll get up to the wall and get my axe out. Okay. And wait. All right. So let's go ahead and take our first break of the evening. Maybe our only break. We'll see. Uh, we'll take a quick 10 minute. I will go ahead and put the players on the map so they have a little bit better idea. And we will signal for the paladin to make its epic entrance and see what happens when we come back. So don't go away. We're about to charge ahead to the Black Pyramid and start a big old brouhaha of some sort. So it should be fun. Um, so stay tuned and we'll be right back.
here we go. Let's move you guys over to the map. Um, Tristan, so before I actually move you guys to the map, um, you see a signal mirror flashing back towards you from the pyramid. Yep. All right. Then what I'm going to do is move as fast as I can and still do a dodge action every turn while I approach. Yeah. All right. So we see you kind of a full gallop racing down this kind of scree pile, um, charging, and we can just hear the, the thunder of the hooves. All of you that are on the barricade and even inside the pyramid can hear the thunder of hooves pretty quickly. So you hear um, it approaching and it's getting louder as he's making his way across the bridge. Across the bridge. I, I'm going to uh, kind of peek over the, the barrier and as he's coming forward, I'm going to see if there's a chance to slip over unnoticed and, and in off kind of off to the side. All right. So you, you start to look over and you see two of the Norkers climbing the barricade towards you. I want to shift to the side of the barricade or to one end that they are not on if I can. Yeah. They're, they're kind of on each end of it. Starting to climb up. Can I go up through the middle and, and you're pretty sure they would see you. Ah, uh, I'm going to go back down and try to go towards the end of the bear barricade, see if I can go around without them noticing. Okay. Um, Wolf Spider, what are you doing? <clears throat> I'm going to transfer over to the wall of the pyramid and start climbing around the back side of that pyramid wall so that I can be up on that, that little edgy. So you want to make, it, wanna up make it up to the top? So, so on the one side, there's the slanted portion of the pyramid, right? Here, let me do uh, this. Here, let me do this. Oh, I remember this. So this thing to the left is wall, correct? Correct. And what is this right here? That's a wall. Oh, so then it's up into the roof. So I'm basically, uh, I was under the impression that there was, um, uh, that this was open out here that I could be on the outside of it. You could, you can climb around, but it's definitely a wall that goes straight up. So this entrance pushes out of the top of the pyramid. It's a big square 20 foot opening that pushes out of the sloped pyramid. I gotcha. Um, if that's my only avenue, because I want to skitter out of their way and, and position myself not right there. So the, so only, the, way, only, way. the only way in is over the barrier? Or you said there was a, a small area that we could go around the barrier and in. Uh, nope, the only way in is over the barrier. And so these guys are more like here now. So yeah, so then Eingar moved kind of to the edge here, hiding down in the corner. The spider is going this way? Yeah. OK. And you want to be on this side. So you don't see them anymore at that point. Well, if I could, I'd like to be peeking around the thing. Uh, but you can. They're going to see you. Yeah, they're going to see you. Then I'll be right there. That's fine. OK. So you're on that side. So their heads kind of peek up over the barricade. And just as they're kind of peeking up and over, we hear the shotted hooves hit the stone of the pyramid stairs 
and the sound of the hooves change from like a, a galloping on ground and rock and um, dirt to a loud metallic kind of clacking of um, the stairs and him just taking, you know, probably like eight or 10 stairs at a time as it's just bursting with uh, energy up the staircase. And just, it's like, a, you know, a trained, experienced horse is able to navigate this. And it's just, it's getting louder and louder and louder. And as that's happening, he's about halfway up. This Norker turns. And begins to run back in. Same with this one. What are you doing, Rock? We'll intercept, I guess. Okay. Um, so this one doesn't even notice you. This one basically is running towards you. Maybe it's looking over its shoulder as you're raising your axe to do whatever. So let's go ahead and do, um, let me clear initiative. Everybody go ahead and select your tokens and choose initiative on the surprise round. The one Norker that's running is gonna to get to go and Rock will get to go. Then we'll start on round two at the top of the round. And as we hit round two um, is when uh, Tristan hits the map and can decide what he's doing. Um, and we'll go, we'll go in turn order from that point on. So in the first surprise round, we'll have two things happening. Um, and let me roll some initiative. Formlick, Marker, this guy, Marker, and that's all we need for now. So let's go ahead and descending. All right, so in the surprise round, Rock, you are moving out of stealth, so you're going to get advantage. He had no idea you were there on this attack um, as you kind of dematerialize out of the darkness. Now, there's a little bit of dim light where you are standing and he's moving into the dim light. The sunshine kind of stops about this area. So from the rest of the area on inside, it's completely dark. There is no lighting at all inside the pyramid. So, Rock, you are up. You get a surprise turn round. Uh, okay. He is going to uh, enter a quiet rage without a uh, his normal scream and attack that. Okay. So bonus action rage and uh, you get advantage on the first attack coming out of stealth. Yeah, he is not going to recklessly attack that. Okay. Hold on, checking. That is a miss. Yeah. The first swing. So the axe um, kind of swishes by. Second axe hits as you kind of pull it as a backhand um, as you were just off when you swung at him. And 12, 14 total. And you deal him a grievous wound that staggers him as he puts his hand on the wall Blood is pouring out of a chest wound that he's obviously not going to survive from unless he gets immediate medical attention. He doesn't quite go down, but he's losing blood at a rapid rate. So that's two attacks and a bonus action. Anything else for Rock? Mm, no. 
No, not this round. All right. Um, that guy was next. Does anybody have the goblin language? I do not. So I, do. I do. I do. The orc knows goblin. All right, let's go back to the battle map here for our audience. There we go. Let's zoom in for them. There we go. All right, so you hear this norker um, in a in a goblin voice say, um, "We're under attack." He yells it out. The spider and our dwarf probably just hear a garbled kind of guttural language shout. Um, I would imagine that, Tristan, you don't hear anything over the thundering of the warhorse hooves as you are approaching quickly a barricade um, in front of you on some stairs. So his turn is to shout, and he moves to a position here and then looks over only then realizing that there's an orc already in the hallway and there's a guy fighting his whole turn was to get into position and yell the alarm that is all his turn so then um the only other person that would have a move on the surprise round is the guy who's going to try to attack uh no he's surprised so he doesn't even get to go so now we're going to go to actual rounds here um, Tristan, you've just made it to exactly where you are on the map. Um, at this point, as this round starts up again, we're at the top of a normal round where we're going to go as normal for everybody's turn. Rock, you're up. Okay, I'm going to attack that. Nor okay. As your axe descends, he throws his stone-like club up and your axe clangs against his club. As you kind of twist your grip and move it around, you sink your axe deep into the side, opening up another ghastly wound and then smashing him against the, the wall and we hear the crunch of bone, and as you pull your axe free, the body slumps to the ground. All right. Um, due to his great weapons mastery, he's going to uh, take another attack on the other Norker. After. Uh, okay. Now, let me give you uh, some vision here. Thank you. Um, hill areas. So go ahead and start to move so I know where you're going. I was going to go to there first. I don't have vision on. There we go. Perfect. You see a group of, of Norkers beginning to get up. You hear noise behind you, and you hear noise further inside the pyramid. There's a lot of moving of bodies and a lot of scraping of um, things, grabbing weapons and shields and the clink of armor and that kind of stuff, all reverberating around as everything is starting to move. Um, oh, actually, let me give these guys a initiative. Um, are the crates and barrels there enough to give cover? Definitely. Uh, well, let's send that to the back. How about like that? No. That should be good enough. Okay. K 
continue on. So yeah, you see movement there. You see some Norkers that are grabbing weapons and you assume there. You even see shapes out of your periphery vision as you burst across to make another attack on this guy. Did you already roll? Oh, no. Okay. I'm going to swing at this guy. Uh, one more roll. All right, so you can see that he tries to um, be really defensive, but your your axe finds a uh, is just too fast for him to block as you sink it into him for ten damage. And after that, that was fifteen feet of movement. Okay. Ah, bugger. I will suffer an attack of opportunity and move straight. Uh, yeah, he'll try to hit you with a stone club as you dodge away. Um, public, normal. You did not reckless, right? No. Still hit. Okay, three bludgeoning damage. It's just kind of a glancing blow as you maneuver off. Um, so rounded down, you take one bludgeoning damage as you are raged. He rolled a three on damage. All right, his attack was a 20. Uh, unnatural 20. All right, so that sounds like that's the end of Rock's turn. That is. All right, nice job. We move into the Norkers who begin to um, assemble and... Yeah, they are going to prepare themselves. So we're going to get some movements. You can hear a lot of shuffling going on. And that is their turn. Uh, the gnolls get to go. They rolled pretty well. So, yeah, they're kind of behind what looks to be like um, bags, of, like burlap bags that have been stacked. And there's a lot of them. Um, let's see who's going to have vision on you, though. Uh, not the ones on the right. They don't have any line of sight to our barbarians so they won't do anything there but what about this guy yeah so within dark vision although you're standing in sunlight there so you're in the entrance you're lit up and they have a bow out that can go yeah super far so Of those that can see you, yeah, that group can see you. So a bunch of arrows come flying at rock. So the first one fires off two arrows, normal, no advantage. Uh, ooh, first arrow is a crit for 10 piercing damage. Second one, arrow smashes against the pyramid wall. Next guy goes two arrows. Uh, 10, arrow smashes into the wall. We hear just this thump, 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 thump. Uh, 20, I assume that beats your AC? Yep. For four piercing damage. The guy next to him, two arrow shots. Uh, 13 and a 12. I assume those miss? Miss. Yep, so two more arrows smash into and break as they hit. And they just shatter. They don't stick into it. They don't glance off. The arrows just shatter when they impact this stone black obsidian. Um, that's three of them. There's two left. 
eight and a six. They don't have a good shot on you. They were just getting up. They just are shooting arrows almost basically more just at the entrance more than they're aiming and they miss. The last one tries to hit you. Uh, 17 is the best hit. 17 hits. 17 hits. Rolls an eight for piercing. So a few arrows stick into our barbarian. Probably nothing too bad as he is raging, but a few shots here. Most of them smash into the wall of the Black Pyramid. That brings us to Tristan charging upon his great war horse at full gallop, taking stairs eight to ten at a time. What would you like yep. to do? So the horse moves 60 is its base speed. So I'm assuming I can move him up to here. No problem. Easily. Yeah, yeah. You have momentum that you could try to vault that with your warhorse. Do it! It's a possibility. Yep. It definitely would be a roll to make it. That's, a hero. That's a hero move. Oh, yeah. Do it! Totally doing that. <laughs> All right. So, All right, make so an athletics check, and I'll let you use your athletics as I'm considering you and the horse one unit at this point. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So... It looks yeah, great. As it makes a jump, at first you're a little bit worried because it looks like it only went halfway, but the warhorse knows what it's doing as its hooves hit the center area of the, um, the barricade and then digs in and launches up and past and over easily. And you, the barricade itself is 10 feet, though. So each square for the barricade is 10 feet. So to get over it, you're going to use... 20 but you have whatever else you have left after that okay should still be 30 and the um for my action i'm gonna do my um divine thing that causes my weapon to be magical and emit bright light awesome yeah and you should be able to see in there now what you can see so does that horse dash for 120 is that what i'm following so it's normal movement 60 yeah. So you could be up in those Knoll's asses if you wanted to right now. True. All right. Of course, doing that would probably get me killed. Because <laughs> there's a whole set of Norkers over here, obviously. So I'm going to end up getting shot by two sets of Knolls and surrounded by Norkers. There's yeah. like 16 yeah. shots up there waiting on you. You probably, as you plow in, you can see the archers behind the sandbags. Probably, technically, you don't know about the Norkers on either side of the wall. Okay. Because you, you haven't seen them yet. Yeah. Well, you know, what you do of archers, you ride them down. So, I will go up to here. I Let's see, that'd be one, two. All right. Yep, that should get me just about to there. And then I've got my sword is emitting bright light for... How far yeah. is that? Bright light for 20 and dim light for another 20. So I'm assuming if these guys are bad with light, they're not really going to like this very much. Yeah, I'm going to open it up as far as what you guys can see just to get... The normally I would have done the dynamic lighting, but I've been slowing the map down because of how big it is. So I'm just doing the reveal part. We'll just keep an eye on what you guys can see. So for you, you've got like this 40 foot circle of what isn't dark for you. So just keep that in mind when you're planning out your strategies. Okay. For for you, the rest of you have ample enough dark vision that you probably can see everything as long as a wall doesn't block what you see. And then for a bonus action, I'm going to cast um, Shield of Faith so it raises my armor class up. All right. Yeah, so this this war horse and paladin astride, um, sword and shield in hand. Is that where the weapons you had out? Yep. yep. Sword and shield in hand. Weapon begins to glow bright, um, thundering inside here. as And the gnolls are just, you've seen that they are turning to react and just you just burst in on them. So there's shock and surprise and, and snarling fear in the eyes. And they're, they're almost biting at the air, like with fear bites as you're getting closer, as you bear down on them. 
All right. So cool. super cool entrance for Tristan. Anything else? Um, can I do an intimidate roll on him? Yes. Is that something I can do? Or that... <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> that is pretty intimidating. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I like it. Um, when the, when the, their turn comes around, I'll do some wisdom checks. And if they fail, they're going to back off from you. And if they make it, they, they'll react accordingly. So the group that's on the left here, so okay. they, they will react to that. So good call. All right, cool. Wolf spider Ilbrix. What would you like to do? Like to do? All right. Now you're halfway up a wall. So keep that in mind. All right. I saw him go flying past as his sword lit up and he jumped over that thing. And I hear the, the calamity that, that happens. And I am going to. The first thing you think is Timor never did that. <laughs> That's cold as ice. <laughs> All right, I am going to move over here to the barrier. Okay. I'm going to use my okay. bonus action to turn back into Albion. All right, I got your token down there. Yeah, there you go. There you go. And then I am going to reach over the top of, I'm going to kind of get up to the the top of the um of the uh <clears throat> whatchamacallit to the barricade so that i'm i'm just above it okay so uh, uh if you're just climbing at normal pace you're not trying to do anything crazy then you can just it's 10 feet of movement if you're going to try to do anything crazy then you need to make an athletics check i just want to be able to get myself like chest high above it and cast a spell. Yeah, so just you just use up yeah, 10 feet so just... of movement. All right. Consider it difficult Consider... terrain. Okay. So I am going to cast Conjure Animals. Sweet. And I would like to ca uh, Conjure eight uh, of the quarter or lower beast. All right. Uh, let's take a look. I think we used a boar last time, right? Yeah. For the quarter ones instead of the... Uh, yeah, because the uh, apes uh, were half, I think. Apes were half, yeah. So I'm going for the full Monty. I think uh, quarter is uh, giant owls, wolves, boars, and spiders. And I'm putting them right here. Um, you know what? I like the idea of astral spiders coming out. And we already have a token. So... Why don't we say eight spiders appear? Sweet. Now, do we have a um, go ahead and roll a wolf spider initiative for me? And I'll add them to the tracker if it doesn't itself. Oh, no, it looks like, because you're a 12, right? Yours was 12. Was 12. Right. And they will go at nine. So let's just move them at nine. All right. Uh, all right. Can you move them slightly? Just move one to see if it'll move. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, I didn't fill out any of their hit points, but you can put them in the little red bubble for the tokens. Yep, I'm on it right now. All right, 
Um, anything else for our druid who is at the barricade? So you would be here on the barricade. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, command them to attack the gnolls, and uh, that is going to be my turn as I duck back down behind the barricade. All right, you'll get some cover from the barricade there. All right, um, Norkers. Uh, all right, yeah, so you hear in Goblin, um, you hear one yell out, to the barricade! And they kind of start to stream around the corner here. Um, so let's go 5, 10, 15, 20. 10, 15, 20, 25. 10, 15, 20, 25. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Uh, but he needs 10 feet. So I'm going to make him make an athletics check to see if he can even do that. Which he only has a deck. Oh, no, he does have athletics. Crazy. Uh, oh, yeah, he gets there. The other ones, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25... 25, 30. Okay, so those three will do that. Um, these ones, they don't see the spiders yet, so they are just going to 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Pile in. All right, so... That is their turn. So one, two, three of them can attack rock. Uh, let's bring them up. And we get a stone club and a bite. So the first one, to the north of you. Well, I have the orientation of the map wrong, but that's okay. One straight up from you would be a stone club swings out. Um, hitting you for eight bludgeoning damage, rolling a 23 to hit. And we see this kind of stone like, it's, it's almost like petrified wood. So it looks like a wood club, but it looks like it's made of some type of petrified kind of wood or stone as it barrels into our orc, raging orc. And then he tries to bite you as he hits you and pulls his club back. Uh, 18, I believe, hits. And you feel his jaws sink into you for five piercing damage, drawing some blood. The guy next to him on the left, Stone Club, uh, misses completely. Um, there's so many people around, he gets jostled, so he doesn't get a good shot at you as he rolls an eight hit to miss. And then tries to bite at you, and again, you smack him away with the back of your hand. He only rolls a 10 and is unable to clamp down on your forearm with his teeth. The last Norker to your left swings his club at you. He is able to connect as you're fending off the second Norker and you are you feel another stone club hit into you for eight bludgeoning damage. He rolls a 22 to hit and then tries to bite you while you're distracted, but you sidestep him. He rolls a 10 and misses, is not able to gain purchase on you. The other Norkers, the only other one that can try anything is one tries to swing over the barricade towards Albrix. You're going to get a plus four to your AC for cover. So, and this guy's only going to get um, his stone club uh, 15. No. So it bounces off the barricade as you're using it for uh, to good advantage. And he tries to bite you 23. 
as he does, uh, Alberix uses his uh, psychic energy to push the attack away and stop it. I'm going to okay. use shield. All right. And yeah, so his, his bite clamps down on magical energy and is unable to damage you, though he rolled a 23. All right. The other ones uh, seem to be jostling for position, but can't do anything else at the bottom of this stack. And that brings us to the spiders. Now, you told them to attack the gnolls? Did. So they would go to the closest knoll. So if you, their instincts are just to go to the closest one they can find and get it. So whatever the least amount of movement you can use to get to something, go after it. Um, and they probably would even gang up too if they could. They can move past um, Tristan, so one could get up and around. We got plenty of movement, I think. Perfect. All right, so let's start with some attacks. We're going to start on the right-hand side, top spider. What type of attacks do you got? Did I give you a character sheet for that? I think sure I do. So this <laughs> first spider rears up and does some no biting. Rolls a 19, which is definitely good enough to get through this Knoll's armor. Now, you notice these Knolls have, um, I want to say, hide armor on. Okay. 19 would hit, so it's 5 piercing damage and 10 poison for shh. Um, let's see. Let's read this. Make a con save. Oh, yeah. He's got to make a con save first. Okay. So let's keep that character sheet open. Let's do a con save. So he misses that, so he'll take the full damage. All right. So a total of 15 on that guy. Now he's not dead, but nearly dead. So the other one kind of skitters right up onto his face and takes a bite at him. 14 hits. Oh no, 14, 14. misses. Does not get through the armor. All right. And then uh, the one underneath him is going to bite. Yep. That one does hit. He rolls a con save again. Makes the con save. He will take half of the poison damage, but four, five, six. Oh, he's at one hit point. Oh, no. All right. And then the last one is going to bite him too. And miss. All right. Uh, left side, starting with the very top one. Top one's going to bite uh, the one right in front of Tristan. Yep. 16 hits for Score three. three. Here's a con check. Um, he passes that, so seven points of damage. Okay. The one below Tristan. Yep. Below the knoll. That's a crit for 22 points of damage. Oh, and he rolls a one for the con check. Blech. Keels over as um, it the fangs sink in and the poison just pumps in and pumps in. You can see the veins turn black and he starts spitting out blood as it instantly. It's like he's not only did he get bit by a giant wolf spider, but he's also allergic to spiders. So it's even 10 times worse. <laughs> <laughs> and he just falls over in a nasty mess. As this spider pulls its fangs out, it's going to squirrel over the top of him and move to the back side over here and kind of nestle down in these blankets, getting ready to attack again. Okay. And then final one is going to attack this guy right here. 
then he misses. One, two. And you still have one more attack. The one you moved um, hadn't attacked yet. Uh, no, that was the one who attacked. That was all of them. That was the one who killed them. Oh, I'm seeing an 11, a 23, and a 5. Right? Oh, oh the, 16, the 16. The 11. The 11. Yeah, the 16 the hit. Gotcha. Okay, cool. No uh, spiders are done. That brings us to... So just as a curiosity, with the spiders in particular, so the gnolls get to see me jump over a barricade, have a flaming sword, and scare them. They get attacked by weird-ass spiders that kill one of their friends in a spitting horrible mess. So I assume that they're not stable at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, like... Worst day for them, for sure. Well, think of it was turned around, Tom. Like a giant knight oh, on horse charged gone. you and four spiders. <laughs> yeah. I'd be setting my own house on fire and running away. You don't even need a knight in that situation. Four giant spiders would chase Tom right out of his Yep. <laughs> yeah, I'd be yeah, gone. Yeah. There'd be flames being thrown back into the house. You know. yeah, yeah, forget this thing. It, it can yeah, stay. No. Eingar is up. All right. I believe I saw the uh, Norker attack. You can, you can see them through um, kind of the, the gaps. Not enough that you can attack or anything, but you can see movement. You can see the swinging of a, a big orc axe on the other side. You know Rock is over on the other side. You can see Albrecht's to your left. You lost sight of Tristan as he magnificently leaped over the barricade and rode inside. That's about what you see at the moment. And I believe I'm still stealth. Sure. Yeah, they uh, don't know you're there yet. I am going to try and get up next to Albjorks. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, hopefully get a surprise attack on this guy. Yeah, the first one would be he wouldn't know you were there. Okay. And... Uh, short sword. 21 hits. Four seven, and then second shot with the short sword. So as he's recoiling from um, your first attack, which was the twenty-one that hit for seven piercing damage, then the twelve, um, he's able to move his stone club in the way as he's reacting to your sudden appearance next to him, and you do no damage. And I'll use my. Bonus action with the battle axe. Ah. And so you chop some of the barricade as again it shifts. And what's you're, you're, you could tell you're having trouble because you're kind of both fighting over a barricade and it's not good footing, it's not good flat ground, and you're having trouble maneuvering on the guy as you miss. Okay. Anything and... else for Eingar? Nope. I'm going to keep the height advantage that I have. All right. Rock is up. Surrounded by green, grayish, skinned Norkers. All right. He uh, realizes the situation is now uh, fully uh, developed, so he will uh, develop that uh, pale blue light in his eyes, will kind of light up, and he will attack recklessly oh, nice. um, with his great weapons. Uh, is Are any of the three around him wounded? The one above you is oh, severely yeah. wounded. Uh, the rest look pretty hale so far. All right. He's going to attack the one uh, directly to his left. So the wounded one is straight up. The other ones all around you are fine. So you want to attack the one to the left is what you said? So the 21 hits because you have advantage attacking recklessly. Ooh. For 21 points of damage. Just cleaves him in half and crashes to the ground. <laughs> yes. Um, I don't have, do I have to take the bonus attack right off the bat or can I hold that? It's going to be three attacks for me this round then. Or do I have to take it right now? It's part of the round. Yeah, I think it's part of it's 
part of the attack you just did. All right, so he will cleave through one, and on his return swing, this will be his bonus great weapons attack. Then I'm to the north and left. Okay. 19 hits. <laughs> 25. <laughs> Yep, crashes hey, through him. You're, you're laughing at this. You remember Rom doing like 40 points of damage in a round on these guys? Oh, yeah. third... We still got our asses kicked. All right. And then his final attack will go to the one of the. Okay. That one, seeing you fell, two of his friends nearly wounded, throws himself against the wall out of the way and your axe crashes down and reverberates in your hands as it you sink it into the floor, though it makes no mark, and you miss him, rolling a 13. All right, anything else for Rock? He's going to point at that wounded guy. <laughs> that was epic. Yeah, nice. Um, wounded guy. Uh, nope, those guys uh, win. Nope, those guys I'm going to take that off the order. They shouldn't have two. So that should bring us to the knolls. Okay. Yep. So they had to do a wisdom save on my side, right? Yep. So let's do let's do that. We'll start from right moving to left. Uh, so we'll say, I'm going to say before I do that, this is 50-50 for them. So under 10 they're going to back off um, over 10. They're going to try to fight it out. Um, you've got them cornered. You've got them trapped because they would, the, the way they want to retreat is down them stairs, but you're in the way. So that's definitely an issue for them. So let's see. First one is going to back away. Um, it will try to attack the spider to the South and then it's going to try to move away. Or no, Does no. It get a opportunity attack for my horse. Uh, he has five foot reach. Um, yeah, you would need ten foot reach. Okay. Um, he's actually not. He's gonna dodge and back off. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. So he backs away in fear, taking the dodge action. Spiders, do you want? to use a reaction i assume they would there's no reason not to <clears throat> top top spider does okay so yep go ahead i would think they all would attack there'd be no reason for them not to so the one misses one uh, all three missed you needed a 15 you shitty fucking spiders oh they did good last round calm down all right uh, wisdom check number two makes a 10, um, 10 or lower dodges and backs off five, 10, 15, 20, 25 it has the dodge action. So I'm going to do one. Oh no, I got this dude over here. Never mind. That was all of them. Dodge back of the room. Yeah, they all have backed off. They all are afraid. They're dodging instead of shooting arrows or drawing weapons and have moved to the back of the room as they are just overwhelmed. Seems that way. He's back. Oh, he's back. Oh, there we go. Sorry. Right. A little lag. <clears throat> Tristan's up. Well, having seen how this worked and how they clearly fear Torm, I'm going to charge the other seven knolls and do it as a like a ramming charge kind of thing for here, I guess, or around the spider or whatever needs to happen there, I guess. Say car ramrod. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to find my... There he is. So... There's something with they charge at least. <clears throat> they have a horse oh, moves at least 20 feet. I was for? just looking it up on his character sheet. Um, and it has to roll an attack. 
Yeah, so the, the horse gets an attack um, on your turn. Right. Although I guess we probably should look at the mounted combat rules. I haven't looked at them in a while. But we'll go ahead for now, and we can look it up before next time. Because I think there's some special things you can do. Could be. I, I'm not sure. In any case, it looks like you missed. Uh, so okay. then I'll take my attacks, I guess. Oh, and you know, actually, their turn wasn't done. But go ahead and continue. I'll let you. I'll let you keep going. Assume a twenty-five hits. Twenty-five will hit. Yep. And then uh, on top of that, I need to adjust this, but it should take. Uh, nope, I got it right. So it's thirteen damage on the first hit. Yeah, that guy's gonna go down. All right. You know, move a little more. That looks like a miss. Yeah, 13 miss. So I'm going to finish their turn now. So that guy okay. is still alive, but you're going to kill sure. him just as he finishes trying to fight off a spider. Okay. Because um, they, I, I only did the left side of the room. I did the right side. So he drops his bow, the guy near the spider. He has his spear and is going to try to spear the spider to his left. So here's spear shot number one towards the spider. Critically misses, spear nearly breaks, tries again, rolls a 19 against the spider. We'll get a minus one minus damage one. Uh, for three piercing damage. Are you keeping Are track, you keep of track of that? Is it this spider right here? To the left. Got it. One all the way to the left, yep. All right, so he gets two attacks. That's his action. Then just as that happens, we see Tristan ride over and chop his head off, um, and he goes down. The next guy, while that was happening, while that whole is still using, he pulls a spear because there's a spider there. He's going to attack the one directly below him. So this is the next one to the right. So spear attack number one. He dropped the bow out of his hand, picks his spear up. Uh, a 20 for the roll so eight piercing damage for the spider to the south of him if it's still alive shears off a couple of legs and it's just scrabbling to stay on top of those burlap sacks so then he tries to spear it one more time as he pulls the spear out and we see greenish blood spurred everywhere he dive, drives it in again for another five piercing damage rolling a 19 to attack uh, is the spider able to survive? For oh, no, King? that spider is split in twain. All right, so we see that one dissipate into dust particles, almost like from the Avengers when we saw the snap happen, just like kind of, and is gone. All right. The other one, the other three can fire their bows. Um... So Tristan, you now notice for the first time one of them looks different than the others. All right. So this one, because Tristan's not quite there yet when this starts, is going to use his bow and he's going to fire an arrow at the spider. Um, that's this one here. So here comes Longbow shot number one. He, rolling a 17 to hit for two piercing damage as an arrow just skims off the carpus of the exoskeleton of the spider. And he tries to sink a second arrow into him for a 14. Is that a good enough AC? It is. Uh, for eight piercing damage. So a total of 10 piercing damage from two arrows into that spider that's not quite dead yet. Um, the other knoll, obviously somebody a little bit different. He pulls out, he has a, uh, glaive and he charges over here, seeing Tristan come and he's going to use his attacks on, uh, Tristan. 
Uh, he's going to swing his glaive. He held his action, so he gets one attack for a held action. So he'll go ahead and swing his glaive at... Um, he's evil. He's going to try to hit your, your war horse, Tristan, to knock you off of it. And he rolls, he rolls a crit and gets um, 16 points of slashing damage. So I'm just not to roll too well on there. No, I rolled some low numbers. Yep. Okay. Um, wait a minute. Oh, the horse still has uh, three points. Oh, yeah. 1d10, 1d10, plus three. Okay. Um, so that's, yeah, that's his held action. Uh, he also yells a command to this knoll that's to the south and tells him uh, in a language that is, does anybody speak Knoll? As one of those no. languages? All right, so you guys hear him say a command and this Knoll um, kind of uh, starts like as if he's scared and fires a third arrow at the spider. But misses. All right. The last knoll is going to, you can't see anybody, but he's going to shoot two arrows at Tristan. So here comes a longbow shot towards Tristan. For a 10, it just flies off into the distance, smashing against one of the obsidian walls. And then a 16, that probably is not good enough either. Another arrow. It, you just push your shield in the way and it glances off the shield and then smashes into a stone pillar um, as it does no damage to Tristan, a 10 and a 16. All right, the knolls are done. That, Tristan did his turn. He rode over, decapitated one of those guys. They go down. Um, you're not going to move away, right? You're going to stay there? All right. That brings us to Alberic's the druid's turn, not the spider turn. You're not making any noise there, uh, Sasha. Is that better? Can you hear me? Yep. Yep. Okay. So I am going to move to the other side of the barrier over here. And... So that guy's going to take a swing at you? Can he do that over the top of that thing? It's within five feet. All right. Misses, continue on. All right. And Alberix is going to pop up over the, the top here. When he gets a look at Rock, what's Rock look like uh, as he's surrounded by all of them? What kind of shape's he in? He's got three arrows sticking out of him, but uh, you probably see him give the point to the, the wounded one like he's going to smash him in his next round. So he's feeling pretty confident. Remember, all those squares you move through, those are difficult terrain, so that was 30 feet of movement to get there. Can I poke my head up over there or no? Yep. Make an attack? Yeah, you're about chest level on the barricade. Okay. And with that, I am going to cast... This is on the... Well, it doesn't matter. It misses. So uh, I'm going to yeah. miss with it my moves. cerebral whip. And then... 13's not high enough. Uh, duck back down. Okay, so you get some cover from the, the side that's to the north of you. Yep. All right. That's my turn. Norkers. So scrabbling, so there's 10 feet moving to get next to Eingar. Um, 10 feet, 20 feet to get on the other side of the barricade next to Eingar and Alberics. 
will be on this side of the gate, this side, uh, and this guy's gonna move, let's say, to the front, moves in, five, 10, moves in. All right, so we have three surrounding our orc buddy. A couple of them are climbing the, <clears throat> scrabbling up the barricade to get a better position. And yeah, that's it for Norker, so some attacks. All right, starting with the top one for our Orc Barbarian. Now they're gonna get advantage because he went reckless. So here comes the first stone club. Uh, does 15 hit? 15 misses. So stone club smashes into the wall of the pyramid. And then he tries to bite onto you as you move your out of the way of that. Quick question, Lucian. Yeah. The um, when you had the arrows hit the wall, they always shattered. Yeah. Like, does the stone club shatter when it hits the wall? It does not. Okay. Is it? Do they look like they're made out of the same material? No, they definitely are more of like a um, petrified wood. Although they could be clubs of stone but of more of a regular stone not a black obsidian okay <clears throat> does a 16 hit yep the, you got it got okay so right. four piercing damage from the bite but then halved due to rage the one to his left tries to swing his stone club gets a 12 he hits the floor missing our orc as he dodges tries to bite him for a 16 Five piercing damage cut in half due to Barbarian Rage. Rolled a 16 to get a bite onto his forearm. The last guy swings his stone club. Again, misses. These guys can't hit with their stone clubs. But gets the bite with a crit hit for seven total piercing damage as they sink his teeth into your calf as he goes low to try to get a good chunk of flesh from you. I was not aware that Watichi were biters. <laughs> yeah, all three of them bit. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so they are done. <clears throat> Let's do the two on the other side of the barricade. These are going to be two. At these attacks will be against Eingar, but these two are fighting over the barricade. So you're going to get a plus four to your AC. So just keep that in mind when I ask you if I hit you or not. So a stone club goes after Eingar. A nine definitely would miss as it crashes into some of the logs of the um, barricade. Tries to reach out and bite you. Uh, does a 14 hit? No. All right, so is not able to bite. Can't get a good position on you. The second one swings his stone club at you while you're distracted. He rolls a 20. Just a 20 hit. That's, that's what on the same side? That's or one where you get a plus four AC. Uh. 20 is what they need. 20 is exact. So it's six bludgeoning damage on Eingar as one of the stone clubs um, crashes against your shoulder. And then it tries to bite you. And with an 18, it would not be able to bite you as you it cannot quite reach over the barricade. This last one is on the same side of the barricade as you, so no adjustment to AC. So this is just a regular attack stone club. Misses with the seven as you kind of move out of the way because you're holding your shoulder that's been hit. And then it tries to bite you while you're distracted. I get another crit from the bites oh. for six piercing damage as it sinks its teeth into you through the armor that you have on. You can feel it bite and take blood. The last Norker on the other side of the barricade, no AC adjustment, is going to try to swing his stone club at Elbricks. He rolls a 16. Catch it on the shield. Okay. He's not able to, to land and then tries to, while your shield is up, go low and get a bite on you. And you bring the shield down on the top of his head, making him dodge and move away. And he does not get any damage on you, which is good. Um, that is the Norker turn. Alberic Spiders. <clears throat> All right, nearly dead spider is, well, these guys are going to start moving in. Um, I 
don't know what these spiders are going to do over here on the left. They would chase after the ones that ran. They're, they're not, I mean, you told them to go after the gnolls, they're going after the gnolls. All right, so let's start on the right-hand side. Um, we've got the one that's to the left of the knoll. Go ahead and make a bite. Uh, are you starting on the left side or the right side? Um, yeah, we'll start on the left side. So let's start with this one, and then we'll move work our way to the left. So first bite uh, definitely hits that knoll. It has to do a con save. Misses the con save. Takes full damage of 12. Oof. But he's still up. So that's uh, two con saves because one's an attack of 21 and the other one's a 19. Oh, yeah. Ooh, two ones in a row. Look at that. Um, takes so, the full damage. Oh, I, I didn't see the seven, eight. So then eight for that one. I did the one below it. So I yeah, did the so 12. I'll do the eight. 20, 21 total damage. Seven, eight, nine. Yep. It is at one hit point. Oh. And then the bottom two on the knoll on the bottom. He's able to fend one off, and he's able to fend the second one off. A nine and a seven are not able to sink their teeth in, so they are being held back as he's batting them away with his longbow that's in his hand at the moment. All right, let's go to the right-hand side for the spiders. So the one that's to the um, right near Tristan, go ahead and do that attack. Um, oh, hold on. So the first one's a 10. Yeah. He misses. The second one's an 8. He misses. The 13 misses. Ooh, bad rolls for the spiders on this round. The um, gnolls are able to swat them away or sidestep or dodge out of the way, and they take no damage from the spider onslaught. Um, they are starting to regain their composure and they can hear their leader yelling um, commands to them. That is it for the spider turn. Eingar, you were up. All right. This one right here, I had already damaged and he is also the one that uh, critically hit me. Yeah. So I'm going to take a swing at him. All right. Swing away. No AC adjustments. 18 hits for eight points, and since he's already been damaged, one point for Colossus Slayer. Ah, one point is what you needed. Ah, he goes down. Ah, so the eight doesn't quite kill him, and you, you've kind of stuck your sword into him, and he looks like he's gonna live, but it's as you pull the sword out, and the blood just pours out, and it stops, because all of a sudden, he realizes all the blood has left his body, and he slumps over. <laughs> Uh, for my second attack, blood is flying off of my short sword. I'll spin around and attack the one that is attacking my friend Alburix. Okay, good. Yep, no AC adjustment for that one. Oh, miss completely. Maybe what happens is, is as you're shifting, your feet kind of slide on the barricade, which is not good footing, and you miss him completely. Um, though nothing happens to your magical short sword, which is good for you. For a uh, bonus action, I'll swing at him with the battle axe. All right, you regain your your balance and try to swing again. Rolling a 16 to hit, your axe slides off the side of its arm and you recognize that its skin is stone tough and you do not damage him. Oh, Okay. These things that's have a very tough hide. That's All my right. turn. All right. Top of the round. I believe we're in round four at this point. You were up. All right. He, uh, he's going to swing at the one he pointed at. 
when it's severely Recklessly. wounded. He should have ran, but he didn't. Oh. Whoa. Used up two of your 20s. Woo. Yeah. Um, there's nothing you can't possibly roll not to kill him, but go ahead and show us the damage just to make it epic. So two 23s, because he had advantage, two natural 20s crashing into this guy um, for a total of 36 points of devastating damage on a guy who had only six points left. That's so, unfortunate. Uh, let's, let's just call this bonus swing uh, a follow through, yeah. right through one. <laughs> you take that momentum as you destroy that Norker, moving it into the Holy next Holy shit! These are cheaty dice. Rolls a third natural 20 for another, another 37 30 points of damage. He will do a full 360 degree spin, continuing that axe momentum. Cheats. This is all cheats. Yeah. Wrecked him. 19. 19 does hit and sinks deep and easily wrecks him. Wrecked him. Damn near killed him. Wow. I don't think I've seen that in a while. <laughs> um, and then he's going to uh, run because he has seen Tristan dive uh, over the, the pair. Yep. Yeah, he's. you can see him because he is shining light brightly. Or at least you know where his light is, though you've lost sight of him a little bit. But yeah, you can make a move as you are freed up. I'll go to there. All right. Nice turn for Rock. Um, that brings us to Knowles. Now, the Knowles on the right, Tristan, you were expecting some fear and um, some trepidation from them, because just like the other ones. But you also recognize their leaders here, and they do not seem to be giving ground like the others are. Um, so, two, the, the one orc is still trying to take your horse down, because he's a mean, nasty Knoll. I said orc, but they're gnolls. So here comes a spear shot towards the war horse. Oh, the 21 should hit for eight piercing damage. Yeah, it kills the horse. All right, so we see, um, as it goes through, we just see it turn almost to um, transparent and then fades as if a breeze takes it away um and then disappears and you get the last in your mind and your telepathic link with your your steed it wishes you well and it will be ready for your call once again as it fades out from under you and you kind of land on the ground let's remove that um but you're you're standing up you don't have to do any crazy stuff for that you've trained for just this type of thing to happen um so that guy still has one more spear attack. Um, he's going to go ahead and spear at you now that he's um, tried to take your horse down. Oh, hold on a second. Um, the null reduces a creature to zero points with a melee attack on its turn. The null can take a bonus action to move up half its speed and make a bite attack. So, yeah, he's going to adjust. Oh, no, no, there's a spider there. He's going to bonus attack the spider with a bite because he reduced a creature to zero. So he's going to try to bite that spider. He's going to bite a spider? He is. He's he's. That's messed that's up. counterintuitive. You see his eyes are raging and he's frothing at the mouth as if he's rabid. Um, here comes the bite for an 11 on the spider. That hits. All right. For six piercing damage. This spider, right? Yeah. And if he's still up, he's going to go ahead and try to spear it with his last spear shot. He is not. I believe that. Okay, so that one's down. It's not clicking on there for some reason, but I, I'm pretty sure that's my one hit point, dude. Okay, so he'll go down. 
and he has a spear shot, so he's going to click on this guy here for a spear. Oh, and he hits for three piercing. Which one? This one right here. The kitty oh, corner. I'm sorry. Um, this one is dead. The other one was a full hit point guy, so I'll adjust this. Okay, yeah, right? yeah, just, yep, just swap it. Okay, he's done. Um, Same shit, different spider. Yeah, no problem. This guy will move to engage Tristan. Here comes spear number one. Ooh, a 22. Does that hit our paladin? Yep, 20 armor class. Six piercing damage as it sticks in and gets through the, the parts of your armor that are, have a gap. Tries it again, but is unable to as your shield gets in the way and you smack the point so it's not able to penetrate. Um, the leader moves in on you. That even with Shield of Faith? Yeah. I only have a 20 armor class with Shield of Faith. Do you do your concentration check at the time of the attack or at the end of the round? Uh, it's when you take damage. All right. So I need one of those. Since okay. Shield of Faith is concentration. Yep. And that's just a D20 50-50, right? Uh, I believe so, unless so, it's so much damage so much that... Damage. It's, a, it's a con check. Yeah, con... Uh, con save. Oh, right. You're good. Cool. All right. Now, the leader, Noel, has moved around, and he has his glaive in hand. And he is going to strike two times with his glaive. First one towards Tristan. Oh, he crits Tristan for 23 slashing damage. Oof. And then feeling the blood and the smell, you can see his eyes are starting to red. He, he's starting to froth at the mouth. He swings a second time for a 20. Um, roll your con save after the crit. All right, so Shield of Faith went down. The glaive comes in, back. smashing for another 13 points of slashing damage on Tristan. I'm down. Oh, Trista goes down. It howls. It has a rampage ability. So it's going to run over and bite a spider. Uh, rolls a 20, rolling five piercing damage on this spider right here. Yep. Then you hear him say in this guttural voice, and this knoll here is allowed to make one additional attack with, with his spear. He's going to try to kill that spider. Uh, he's going to shoot at this one. Gets a 21. They're rolling good now for eight piercing damage. I think that's enough that's to take enough. that spider out. That is enough to take the spider down. Um, last one sees an orc coming, is going to try to fire his longbow at the orc, um, who was reckless, correct? Yep. So advantage longbow number one, but only rolls a 12. We, it, this is like halfway across the room. One of the arrows hits, um, one of the wooden crates. He's grabs an arrow quickly knocks it fires one more time and also misses he's not able to do anything he's going to back off 5 10 15 20 25 to the back corner whoo left side um knoll number one right here he's going to attack the furthest one away spear shot number one normal oh that's not supposed to be a bite um, uh, it rolls the same, so it doesn't matter. Miss. Uh, spear shot number two. Crits. But only five piercing damage on this spider. Next no over, we'll try to spear this spider. Spear number one. Spear number two. One hit out of that. Rolls a 20 
to hit and a 10 to hit. Only one of them gets through. Five piercing damage on that one. This, I'm going to go the lower one because he has his spear out and he is going to attack this spider. Spear number one rolls a 15 to hit. Spear number two rolls a seven to hit. I'm only getting one of the spears and rolls six piercing. So I don't think that's enough to take any of them out, but only injure them. The one in the corner will fire a longbow shot at this spider here because he's not within five feet. Rolls a 19 to hit. Five piercing damage on this spider. Uh, if it's still alive, he will fire again. If it's not, he's going to change his target. So is that one still, oh, alive? No, he's still alive? No, he's still up, yeah. Okay, so he'll fire one more into him. And misses. Knolls are done. Whew. Some good, some bad rolls there. Tristan has fallen, bleeding on the floor. Um, but it is his turn, so he gets to make a death save, please. D20 roll death save. <sighs> one fail. He coughs some blood out. We see it kind of pouring onto the ground. Albrecht's the druid's turn. All right. One second. So, uh, can you give me a 30 foot radius, please? Off of, uh, uh, uh yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm. Oh, where's it at? Let's grab. No. Everything's really slow. Give me a sec. There it goes. Uh, controlled by. All right, you should be able to move it. I'm going to reload my screen here real quick. All right. So, um, with a, he utters a word that, uh, um, a, uh, a swarm of fireflies that, that move out into this area and then shape into a, a, a horse shape in the middle of the room and a sphere is around it and then he walks over to his dwarven companion and casts uh cure wounds and that is going to give um rock and Tristan, five hit points back each, and then I'm going to heal uh, the dwarf. For nine. So, Rock and Tristan both get five hit points. Cool. Thank you. And with that, he puts his shield up and uh, Man, I kind of want to back away. <laughs> uh, 
and he stays right where he is. All right. That brings us to the remaining Norkers. So we'll get one that moves across the barricade. So we're going to have two that attack Eingar on one side of the barricade and one that attacks Albrex on the other side of the barricade. So no adjustments for AC. Um, let's start with the one on the left trying to hit the dwarf. Uh, let me get my character sheets up again. So here's a stone club first for a nine, which would miss, and then tries to, while you're dodging out of the way of that, get some teeth on you for a bite, rolls a 20, and takes six piercing damage to Eingar. That'll hit. The one on Eingar's right, while you're distracted, Stone Club whistles towards you, but misses, hits the barricade instead, tries to bite while you're distracted, is unable to latch on, nearly falls off the barricade trying to get to you, but is not able to get you. The last one tries to swing his Stone Club at the Druid who's been casting spells, rolls a six, the Druid is able to dodge out of the way, a bite comes out for a 12, which should not hit either. The shield comes up and is able to, to kind of push the face of this Norker away as these teeth try to clamp onto you, but miss. Those are the only three Norkers that are left, so that is their turn. That's going quick for them. Um, we are on to Spider Albrix now. All right, spiders are on this. So we have one left on the right. So let's do one attack on the right um, to the gnolls. And we'll say it attacks the leader. Ooh, okay, so it hits the leader. He needs to make a con save. He does not, so he'll take the full damage of five plus three for poison for a total of eight damage. Oh, what's his hit points? Is that, okay. I had his token wrong. Uh, yeah. Okay, his token's set right now. Minus eight damage is good. He does not, he definitely looks way tougher than these other gnolls, and that um, bite does not even barely seem to phase him. Let's go over to the left-hand side now. We've got, um, start with the one on the right, the, the right furthest one. Go ahead. Misses the next one to his left. 16 hits. Um, no matter what he rolls, it kills him because he only had one hit point. He goes down as the fangs sink into him and pump him full of poison. Um, next one to the left, spider bite. Uh, 17 would hit for, let's do a roll for him. And that would be a con. Ooh, he makes oh, he it. makes it. So six points of damage. And then the last attack. Good bite. Can he make the save? He does not. Takes the full damage. So a total of 16 total, and that's exactly what he had. So he goes to zero because of the poison. I think technically he's unconscious. As, as the fangs just keep pumping poison into his veins, falls over. Um, that is the spiders. Uh, those two can maneuver so that they can have an attack next turn. Brings us, Brings to, us Eingar. to Eingar. 
I, the guy that kind of on the right of me that kind of tripped and looked like he was falling, I'm going to help him along. Okay. There it is. This should be pretty good. Uh, less good than I thought it was going to be. Um, because it's vicious, I believe it has a special quality. Yeah, we, we added it in. He just rolled a two and a three. Ooh, that's weak. Yeah. And he rolled a two on the first die, so some some low rolls. Yeah. Right. Ten's nothing to scoff at. Ten is good. Good hit though. On the first attack. Up, I'll swing at it again. Yep, twenty-one hits. Uh, that kills him. So two quick, vicious sword, sword strikes, and the Norker tumbles down off of the barricade, dead. And I'm gonna back. I'm gonna backhand a with a battle axe on the guy on my left. All right. Again, the battle axe hits him, but is not able to penetrate the thick hide of this creature. Okay. That's it. All right. A rock up. Top of the round. You can see Tristan laying on his back, but you, you see him kind of like getting to his elbows, so you can tell he's moving. All right. Um, rock is going to charge the leader with a shout a mighty is, is it intelligible how loud is, how it? Loud is it yarp just Ooh. like that yarp <laughs> all right charge away um he uh however in the red haze he is experiencing he is not going to attack reckless all right let's take that off now this guy has a big glaive as you run up to match your great axe. That's a shame, great axe. Yeah, sure is. Misses as your your rage fueled attack. You stumble slightly, and missed. Uh, Fifteen does hit. Oof. Ten. All right, so you definitely put a gash on him, gives him a wound. Um, it hurts, but he's still definitely up. Anything else, Rock? I will maintain my position. Noel's turn. Let's start with Noel's in the corner. There's only two left in the left corner. The one drops his bow because there's things within five foot of him. There's no sense he can't fire it. Just drops it, grabs his spear to, sh to strike. So the one at the very left is going to strike straight down with his spear first. Normal attacks. Here comes the first one. Hitting the spider four, rolling a 21. Three piercing damage. Uh, that one probably is still up, correct? Yeah, he's fresh. So he will try to put another spear into him for a 15, which should hit six piercing damage. And that should be enough to take him down. Right? Or not. That's the, the bottom left spider was at full. Oh, okay. So. The guy next to him is also going to attack the one straight south of him. So spear shot number one, rolls a 17 to hit, does five piercing damage to the one straight south of him. If it Cheering is still up, spiders. misses with that attack. Minus one on his next, on his damage. All right, so that is all they did. They are in dire straits in the corner there. Let's go to the right-hand side. We have a archer who can fire some arrows, so he's going to try to arrow rock. Get him out of the way. Longbow number one. Miss. Minus one damage. 21 should hit, so four piercing damage cut in half due to raging from an arrow. 
All right, he is done. That leaves the two that are one that's standing over Tristan and one that's on the spider. So the spider, well, the one is going to try to spear Tristan. These things are scavengers. They are rabid and rampaging and frothing at the mouth. They're losing control. And as they see Tristan move, he's just going to try to spear at him again. This will be an advantage because you are prone. So a 21, but only three piercing damage. <laughs> so he has to use his other attack to try to get Tristan. And he misses. The knoll next to him is still fighting a spider. No advantage. So spear shot number one. Hits a 17 for six piercing damage. Is that spider still? Oh, the spider evaporates. Okay, that one goes down. He moves in to attack the orc. That one does not realize Tristan is up, so tries to spear the orc. For a 21 to hit and seven piercing damage cut in half by the raging barbarian. That knoll is done. The last person up, the leader, takes two glaive shots at our barbarian. No crits. No crits. Misses on the first one. The great axe and glaive collide. No damage to the barbarian. Ooh. Damage to the barbarian. And misses again. Oh Out my of gosh. anger and rage, he uses one more ability that he has, and he tells this knoll next to him to strike you again. And this knoll takes his spear one last time and tries to strike the barbarian. And also gets a minus one damage now, missing also. The gnolls are done. Tristan, you have survived an onslaught of spear shots prone on the ground, but it is now your full turn. All right. So I'm going to do lay on hands for the full amount and get myself back up to 27. And All then right. standing up is an action or no? It's half your movement, not an action. So just right. half your, so you have 15 feet of movement left after this. Okay. Well, I'm just going to stay there, I guess, because if I move, I do an uh, opportunity attack no matter which way I go, I think. If you leave five feet, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yep. And I can't attack because the, uh, I have two attacks, but that's not two actions. The attack is one action, right? Right. Yeah. One action that gives you yeah. two attacks. Yep. Right. Okay. Then I'm done. All right, but your all your wounds have started to heal together through divine energy. You are back on your feet, sword and shield in hand. Um, all right, that brings us to Alberix the Druid is up. All right, Alberix um, grasps his, uh, his the staff that he has, and as he slides his hand down. The, the nodules of the, the carven insects start to writhe and come alive. And I am going to use uh, one charge from this to create an insect cloud. So in a 30 foot radius from me, the area becomes heavily obscured for creatures other than me. So these, the, just a, it, it just absolutely erupts from this the staff and and these insects are in people's eyes and their hair and and clinging to everything and making it very difficult for anybody to do anything and yes and i'm gonna put a radius on myself i put some i put an insect swarm over you awesome And then I'm going to move up and cast with my bonus action healing word. So I will uh, take, um, let me, oh, hang on. So yeah, I would get to swing at you. But if you're, it might be a disadvantage. It's, if it's right. obscured, it's effectively blinded, so it gets disadvantage on 
any attack made. All right. So let's do that as you're moving away. So it's swinging at where it thinks you are. Um, it will use a club. Uh, disadvantage. Here we go. 13. No. Okay. So continue on. And then once I get there, I'm going to cast Healing Word on... Did you break up there? I, had, I didn't hear that. I'm going to cast Healing Word on Rock. Oh, on Rock. Okay. Ooh, nice heal. So he gets 13 points back because he's inside my totem. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Tristan gets five hit points back. Yep. Yeah. Eingar doesn't get anything because he's not there. <laughs> Eingar's left behind. Okay. Anything else for the druid? Nope, that's my turn. No pressure, dwarf. <laughs> All right, Norkers. Um, since he can, he's going to climb over the barricade and cut off Eingar's retreat. Staying within, uh, oh, that guy died, so he could just take that guy's pay place. Like that. Um, here we go. So, two attacks on Eingar, no adjustments. Stone Club first for a 17. Does that hit Eingar? That hit Eingar? Um, I believe that's all heavily obscured. Oh, okay. Let me roll. Yeah, let me roll again. Uh, yeah, 17 would still hit. Yep, it hits. So five bludgeoning damage as he's swinging wildly inside the, the insect swarm. And then since he feels where his club hits, he tries to bite in that direction. Uh, but only rolls a 13. Does that hit? 13 does not hit. Yeah, I think your AC is better than that. All right, so the other one swings wildly with his stone club. The last one gets a 15. That will not hit. Missing um, with all the insects that are around and then tries to bite randomly. Rolling a 12, unable to find purchase. Norkers are done. Eingar's turn. I'm going to spit out a couple of these bugs in my teeth. And yeah. sensing where somebody hit me from, I'm going to swing at the right one. Yep, so you get the same problem, but go ahead, disadvantage swing. 13, uh, you you feel your sword swish through the air. Swing at it again. Ah. Uh, a 10 also misses. Swish and, again. Uh, battle axe for the bonus. The battle axe bites in. 17 is what you need to hit a Norker to get through its tough hide. Ooh, okay. 10 slashing. Which one was that, to the right or the left? The right. Was that one hurt before? I don't, no. believe, don't believe it had. At least not by me. No wounds. All right, anything else for Eingar? Nope, that's it. All right, top of the round. Rock, you are up. I'm going to swing at the north uh, east knoll recklessly. Okay. Hoping for the crits. Uh... 22? Uh, yep, yeah, 22 would hit. Or 24. Ooh, yes. That is enough to take that knoll down. If I move into his position, do I take an attack of opportunity from the null fighting time? No, it's it's only when you leave their five foot reach, not when you move into their five foot reach. And I move into that position and I attack the lead. All right. So this is the the extra attack you get from the zero, right? So this is the great weapon attack. Right. Okay. Sixteen. 
Uh, yep, 16 hits. 22. 22. Ooh, nice. He's not going to last much longer. Then the last attack. Okay, so, yep, attack number two. Miss. Does not come through. Dang on it. Mm. And actually, don't you have a minus one on your axe? Ah, for damage? I'm sorry. Yes. So... Minus two at damage there. Plus one. Or one damage. It probably won't matter, but I'm going to give him his plus one. All right. Is Rock done? Rock is done. Oh, the gnolls. They do not have much time left. All right. Um, But they're kind of in a frothing craze, so they are not thinking too clearly. So let's start in the left. Let's see if these gnolls can finish off these spiders that they're surrounded by. Um, so Noel in the corner, two spear shots. First one to the one to the south. First spear. 16 should hit a spider, doing eight piercing damage. Oh, yeah, that's that, it. That one disappears into etherealness. So then it takes its spear and hits the one next to it, or attempts to, rolling a 21 to hit, strikes true for seven oh, piercing. Seven. Oh, yeah. And that one dissipates. The other Noel takes his spear, um, this one here, rolls a 21 to hit. They are now six piercing damage towards that spider. Yep. That one's out. Dead spider. Dead spider. And the last spear shot at the last remaining spider also hit all good hits from those gnolls in the corner and good damage rolls, eight piercing. Is that one up or down? He is gone as well. All right, so the gnolls have taken care of them. So that was their actions. Um... Yeah, I don't think they need to do the, anything else. The, I think they will just position, position like that. Give them so that they can actually possibly see. So they move. Okay. Um, Noel in the corner firing arrows at Tristan. Two arrows from a longbow. Here they come. Number one. What, Noel in the corner? This one up here. Oh, gotcha. Top top right corner. But arrow flies out, missing the whole melee that's happening there. Tries to hit him again as Tristan is dodging, ducking, and weaving. Rolls a 20. That should be a hit on our paladin for four piercing damage as an arrow draws some blood from you. All right. Um, he is done. Let's go with the spears towards Tristan. Spear number one. This is the guy to his right. 21 should hit our paladin for eight piercing damage. So they're, they're doing well, but they are dying quickly. One more spear shot towards Tristan. Uh, 14 would miss as your shield... Um, gets uh, blocks the spear shot out of the way. No damage to Tristan. The leader takes two glaive shots at um, our... One of those is going to be for uh, disadvantage. disadvantage or at right. least not advantage. Yep, so here's the first one. Rolling a nine, which would not hit the barbarian. And then through anger and a frothing mouth, tries to hit one more time on a normal. Only rolling an 11 is not able to hit the barbarian. That is unfortunate. Um, he will incite the knoll next to Tristan, yelling at him, why has he not killed the paladin? And that knoll will spear at Tristan one more time. He rolls an 18. Is that enough? Oh, yeah. For four piercing damage. A little bit more blood drawn. 
Tristan's turn. Alrighty. Who's more messed up, the leader or the null? The null next to you has no wounds on him. The leader has many wounds on him. Nearly nearly right. going down. Alright, I'm gonna attack the leader then. Okay. Twenty two hits for sure. Oh well, eleven is exactly what you needed. He was holding on. Excellent. As he goes down, as we see the long sword just stab into his throat. Alright. That works for me. And then the last one. Another 22 hits. Gives him his first wound. But he is still standing. Cool. I'm good. All right. Norkers. Um, yep. They're just going to swing in the wind at the dwarf that they have here. So we'll do some disadvantage attacks. Stone club first. A 10 would miss and then a bite. Uh, 12 should miss. Then the other Norker swings a stone club. 15. Will miss. 15 misses. And then a bite. 16. That hits. Four piercing damage on the dwarf ranger. They are done. Uh, that brings us to Eingar. So you're in the middle of this swarm of insects. You hear things going on. Can't quite see much. You've taken a wound. I know I've hit this guy right here, so I am going to swing at him. Okay. 14. Miss. Swish through the air. Not able to connect. Same thing. More? Swish through the air. Mm. Not able to connect. Uh, Eight. Swish. So you were not able to find purchase. You thought he was there. You thought there was a blob there, but it ended up being a big blob of insects you were swinging at. That's it. Uh, brings us to Rock. The leader has just died. And to, uh, since my kill has been stolen from me, uh, just turn around and do a backhand at the... It's still reckless. Oh, okay. Yes. Misses you. You were so put off by not being able to get that kill. You swing wild. Second reckless attack. Sixteen, 16. does hit. Oh. Twenty-two. Yep. Good damage. He goes down. Uh, with my bonus attack, I will move across. Are those just bed rolls? Yep. Charge that guy has been plinking me. Okay. Mm, miss. 14. Miss. Yep. As he dodges away. But I want him to try to shoot me again. <laughs> yeah. Do it. All right. Anything else for Rock? That's it. He points at that guy, too. All right. The Norkers. Or, I'm sorry, the, the Knolls. So he has to drop his weapon, grabbing his spear um, against our barbarian. So spear shot number one. Crit for six piercing damage. Not very good damage. And then spear shot number two. Rolls a 20 for four more piercing damage. Halved due to... Oh, actually, let me roll one more on him just in case it's a crit. It wasn't. Okay. So six and four total for them. Cut in half by the Barbarian's Rage. Over on the other side, we have two. They are going to just drop spears on the ground. And they're going to pick up those bows that they... Uh, Yeah, they're not going to stow a weapon. They're just dropping it. So they're just going to pick up a bow and fire some arrows. Weren't the bows against the wall where they were fighting the spiders? Well, they get a free action to interact. So, um, okay. yeah, I mean, yeah, you could say they would go and grab it and then move to position. 
Um, each one would have a free action. Their, their spears are kind of in this spot here. Um, all right. So they're going to try to hit Alberix, but it's going to be disadvantaged shots. So who knows if that'll work. Here comes two arrows first. Here's the first one. Oh, a 21 hits. It somehow can see not the, it's only the seven points of piercing damage that hits Alberix. Do you have any concentration going on, Alberix? Um, you know what? I don't. All of my um, Goonie Goo Goos are gone. Okay. So just seven points of piercing damage and longbow number two. Oh, look at those two crits. But a 19, does a 19 hit you? Sadly. For six piercing damage. So somehow that knoll lined up and was able to pelt you with two arrows. The other one tries the same thing. Uh, arrow just flies through and misses completely, shattering against one of the walls. And same with that one. So that is it for the knolls. Tristan's up. Get him. Charges across the room. Um, the knoll parries your melee shot with a 12. You're unable to hit, but the 20 sinks true as you go from a flat snap back into an offside hit. 14 slashing damage. Oh, he's not dead. He is almost dead, but still stands. Figures. Anything else for Tristan? Nope. Norker round. Um, all right, I guess they're just going to try to flail away at our dwarf who's not moved. Hey, I got skipped. Oh, where were you? I was at 12. Oh, you pulled the spiders off. He disappeared. Oh, all right. Yep. So, spider. Uh, spider all right. I am going to move. Bef um, before I move, I'm going to attack. Uh, which Norker looks hurt more next to him? Next to who? On here. You can't see through the cloud of insects. It doesn't obscure my vision. Oh, well, oh, well. Yeah, I guess that's true. They are on the other side of the barricade fighting. Uh, let me add you in here. You said you're a 12, right? Oh, if it looks like it's going to be a tough shot over the barricade, then I won't do it. Yeah, they're definitely getting bonuses to AC for that. All right. Then I am going to... I'm going to move up here, and I am going to snap the knoll in the face with the Cerebral Whip. Cool. So he's getting the whip. The top one or the left one? Whichever one is hurt more. Uh, 14 does not hit. Dang it. And so Cerebral Whip shoots out, yeah, but is not turn. able to connect. Nothing else. That's it. All right. You guys are here for, we had a bunch of people jump into chat. You guys are just in time for the end of the battle. It looks like we're almost there. Uh, the Norkers turn, who are no longer obscured. Thank God. They are going to try to beat this dwarf down who has been stalwart. Uh, stone club number one at normal. We'll start on the right-hand side guy. Oh, he rolls a 20, hitting for six bludgeoning okay. damage as it crashes into you in your shoulder and then tries to bite you while you're distracted. Uh, 14, I believe, misses on your AC. Yeah. 
And then the one behind you, while you're trying to fend that one off, swings his stone club at you. Missing, hitting the barricade wood as it crashes into that. And then tries to bite you one last time. Oh, my rolls have failed me. Norkers are done. Eingar, you are up. The Battle of the Barricade down here in the south. Go ahead. I find, I spit the final uh, bugs in at in this guy's face on my right. <laughs> yes. And swing it, swing away at him. So an eleven will miss, kind of swish past as he dodges out of the way. Sixteen hits him, but does not draw blood. The hide is too tough. And battle axe once again. But the battle axe sinks in true. For eleven, and he's already damaged. He is. For another three. So we see the battle axe cleave into him as the sword was not able to leave a mark, but then smashes into him and his body tumbles off the barricade and piles up on the other one. So there's now two of them piled up here as the body rolls down off the barricade. Anything else for Eingar? Right. I'm going to step on the other side if I can. Uh, yep, just difficult terrain, so 10 feet of movement. Okay. That's it. All right. Rock, top of the round. Barbarian, you are up. I'm going to attack this guy in the corner. Oh, my lord. Pick it on him. Go ahead. Recklessly. Reckless, okay. With advantage, swing number one strikes true. I do not think he's going to live. Nope. He goes down as a great axe chops him in two. Blood sprays out in that corner. He slumps to the ground. And without a moment of hesitation, he will move his full movement uh, towards the other three. Sure, you kind of throw yourself into a swarm of insects. You're not quite sure where they are. Uh, you can't move through walls there. All right. Yep, those are walls. I got to go to there. All right. Yep. So you think they're on the other side there, but you're not quite sure where they are. Anything else for Rock, the Barbarian? That's it. That is it. The remaining gnolls, um, they're being tracked down by this pesky druid. They're going to fire their longbows at him again at disadvantage. Longbow shot number one towards the druid, Albrix. 13 misses. Arrow flies off and hits one of the crates. Longbow shot number two. Rolls a six. Arrow flies out, hits the back of the pyramid, crashing against the wall of the black obsidian. Um, Knoll number two misses with his arrow, and both all four arrows miss. Knolls are done. They're going to back up. Oh, I'm going to back them up. That is their turn. Tristan, you are up. You can't quite see past the wall there, so keep that in mind. Yep. I'm just going to move up to there, and then let's see. They're going to move there. I think that's going to be it. So um, you can either hold your action, you can dodge, you can dash for another 30 feet. Yeah, I guess I'll dash. Okay. I'm going to follow up on the outside edge of uh, the insects, I guess. Yeah, so you kind of start swarming your way through and just kind of... There you go. All right. Anything else for Tristan? Nope. Aldrix, you are up. All right. I am going to... As he moves in, he kind of pushes the swarm into the face of these guys here and is going to um, do a psychic whip. All right. Psychic whip. 12, 12 misses. All right. And then I'm going to move over to here. That's my turn. All right. So we're coming back around. Uh, Norker's back down here. There's only one left. 
He's going to follow Iyengar on the other side of the barricade and take his shots. Stone Club misses, rolling a nine, hits the barricade, tries to bite him. Rolls a Ted. The Dives rolls have left him. He is yes. done. Eingar is up. You have chosen poorly to follow me. <laughs> he, he nods in agreement. <laughs> <laughs> 12 misses. 25 sinks true. You draw blood. Ooh, six. He had not been hurt yet. Not been hurt yet. Battle Axe does 17 is exactly what you need to break the hide of the Norker for another four. And another three for Colossus. Oh, and another three. All right. He's staggered by both shots, but he still stands. Okay. Hoping to swing at you one more time. I'm going to move to there. Okay. Rock, you are up. Okay, does the swarm move with Albiric? Yeah, there's like this big 30-foot swarm of obscuring oh. stuff. I mean, I technically... <clears throat> you're going to have no idea where they are. He's just going to charge right towards where he thinks they are and leap through that swarm, come out swinging. So the swarm starts right here. So you can kind of see the edge of it. So he makes that 40 foot move. And attacks the first uh, one he sees. Roll a perception check for me. I'm enraged. Does that affect my perception? Let me check. Nope. It does not. Just a normal perception. Mm, okay. All right. So go ahead. Uh, disadvantage. Swing at some knolls. If I'm reckless and disadvantaged, am I just normal? Correct. Counteract each. Yep, if you're reckless. Fifteen. Swish goes through the air. Second attack. A nineteen finds purchase. Oh, nice. My gosh. Hmm. Let you randomly choose which uh, null I struck. Yep. About that. Yep. You just, I mean, you, you don't even know if he goes down. You just know that you hit hard and you pull back. The insects are wet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you would think, think you'd get another swing. Another swing. I roar into the swarm. Oh, did I kill him? Yeah, yeah, he died. Uh, yeah, 22 will hit. More wet insects. Wow. Dude, you just rolled max damage twice. What is up with your dice? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah, that you feel it solidly hit, and then again, you're pulling it back. You're still blinded by the the swarm. I, uh, I whisper a quiet prayer to uh, some god above me that I have not cut down any of my friends. Uh, Elbricks, your swarm goes down. <laughs> it's a great axe in your chest. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> right. No, if he'd have rolled bad on perception, it was going to happen. <laughs> All right. Oh, god. Come out there, uh, swinging. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, anything else for Rock? No. All right. That brings us to the Knolls. But the Knolls are dead. So that brings us to Tristan. You see, yep. you see the barbarian orc dive into just a swarm of insects. And you're just like, you can't see anything. Yeah, but I can see that the insects suddenly got redder. Sure. The red mist. <laughs> sure, yeah. It's a big red mist. Lots of red mist. Yep. 
All right, I'm going to chuck a couple javelins at our friend and Norker down here. All right. If you step to the right just a little bit, you won't be affected by the insects. There you go. All right, javelin away. 19 and a 27. Yeah, both hit. Nicely done. Oh, yeah, first one killed him. Didn't even have to throw the second one. So he gets pinned to the barricade with a javelin. You can keep the other one. Sweet. Anything else? You still have movement or one more attack? I'm going to move right there. This is like some type of pillar, right? It is. It's a big black pillar. And on either side is stairs that lead down, but there's a wall there that separates them. Okay. And I don't see anything coming up the stairs? Not currently. All right. Good. Yeah, I'm good. Uh, Alberix, you see the last two knolls go down. Um, so at that point, you would know... Uh, you would assume, I don't know, you might not know if people are still up or down. Where, where you're at, you don't know if others are up or not. You'd have to get more central. All right. So I'm going to move this direction. I see Rock is okay. Yep. And as I move to here, I see that Tristan is all right. Yep. And I can see the dwarf, right? Yeah, and you don't see any... You see bodies along the floor where he's standing, but you don't see anything moving down there. Um, and you see nothing moving up in the corner because you have 60 foot... No, you don't have dark vision, do you? I do not. Well, that might have changed how the whole thing went around, but we'll let that go for now. <laughs> okay. Um... All right, yeah, so I think you would be able to tell that there's, we can go out of turn order at this point. You guys have realized it gets quiet and no bodies are moving and you hear the sound of just heavy breathing and your own armor and footsteps at this point. Albirix just says, shh. And as he does, the insects just seem to thin out and dissipate as the effect ends. Awesome. Really, I was kind of hoping rock would be covered in blood, and then on top of that, just a mess of butterflies all over. <laughs> so, just a thought before your unicorn totem goes away, do we want to cast any heals to get the bonuses? Um, yeah, I think we were on round number seven at that point. Um, so you would have had a little bit left. Yeah. Oh, but you'd have to we, cast to do it. So are you going to use spell slots? Yeah, I do have to cast to make it happen. Yeah, because I'm a bit under half. It looks like Eingar's close to half. I don't know what rocks at. I'm more than half, but... Well, as you guys are thinking about that... Um... You get a better look at this room. Those of you that have night vision, dark vision, can see a little bit better. The, the Alberix and Tristan, who can only see by the light of his sword, um, you can see that there are some crates and barrels that look like supplies. Uh, there's definitely sacks of grain that have been stacked up and were being used as a barricade, but were also parts of supplies. There were a few bedding areas in the corners, so it looked like Obviously, the gnolls were sleeping at the top part of this pyramid, and the norkers were sleeping down in the part towards the door. Um, and now there's just bodies and blood strewn everywhere. But it is quiet at the top of this pyramid. So everybody gets five hit points back on that first cat, and then nine, six heals. That's it. Well, if you're casting Healing Spirit, that would get everybody healed, right? Oh, right, but I wanted it. You want to do the the ten max heal thing, or no? Sure, but I think that's more than. I mean, go ahead and make okay, the rolls. I think that'll heal everybody up. 
Okay, I'm good with that. So, uh, just do ten d six. Yeah, unless you roll bad, I think it would work. Yeah, because everybody's going to get the. No, I guess they wouldn't. They only get the five the first time, don't they? For the unicorn. I don't really want to do ten d six because that sucks. <laughs> How about we so, just go with what Lucian said when he said it worked? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah, I'm okay with that. You used a spell slot. Dude, that was a freaking epic fight. Holy shit. Um, <laughs> Alberix right. is going to point to his companions. Gather them up. See if there's anything that we can that we can use as he points to the leader, especially. Yeah, I'll start searching too. All right. Yeah. So what we'll do is we're going to wrap our session up for tonight. We will assume when we come back for next Monday's game that we are in the 10 to 15 minutes of you searching bodies and moving bodies around. And that's where we will pick up. You will find out what you find on some of the bodies um, you do realize that none slip past you with Tristan's uh, bold, dashing move. None went down the stairs. So for the first time in the Black Pyramid, no reinforcements had been summoned. So we'll have to see what kind of advantage that gives you guys in the next um, go around when we come back on Monday night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern when we pick back up with our Seeking Revenor campaign. That was the epic battle for tonight. If you missed it, you could check it out on the VODs or on YouTube when I go ahead and post it. Uh, for the raid that came in, thank you for raiding. It was Indoor Adventures group came in with a party of 12 people to watch and a few stayed, which was awesome. And uh, it's all the people we recognize like LB and Greybeard and RJ, all those people that we got to meet at Gen Con, which was super fun. So they came and watched the last part of that. So thanks for that. Uh, hopefully we'll see you next Monday when we jump back in and they go further down into this evil black pyramid. So hope to see you next week and uh, everybody have a good time. Say bye. Outro. Have a good night. Transition. Yep.